Hello community! Today I want to show you how to do animations from a panda data frame, your data in a panda data frame, in Plotly Express in a Colab notebook. And it is as easy as you can imagine. I had videos on a two-dimensional visualization, a scatter matrix. I had another video on the interactive 3D data, you still see it here, where you can have a look around in a three-dimensional space. And today we're going to have a look at and how to construct an animation of a panda data frame and then send it off this interactive HTML file per email or you want to put it on your homepage so that everybody can use it in the interactive version. And we do install it in our Colab notebook with pip install upgrade Plotly. We go for version 5.10. It is October 2022, and all we have to do is say import plotly.express as peaks. This is it, you're ready to go. You need nothing else for the interactive Colab notebook visualization. So here we go. At first, you know me, we load, of, of course, some data that have been prepared for us. We say, okay, Panda uh, Plotly Express data frame. Gapminder. Let's have a look at this panda data frame. What kind of data do we have? We're working here on the free CPU version so that we don't take away the GPU for anybody who's doing research. So I have here countries, I have here the continent, I have here the year. So we're going to do some time series, you know, when we have some year. We have done data like life expectancy, the population size, the gross dom the domestic product per capita. Then we have some isonomeric values whatsoever. We do not need here any matplotlib inline or anything at all. It is so easy with the new version 5.10. I have now, I say, plotly express a scatter. So I have a two dimensional scatter plot. I have here my data frame, data frame underscore m. And then I say, what is my X and what is my Y data axis? And put here GDP per capita and here my life expectancy. The population size is the size of my data marker. The color should color code the continent. And if I hover over a data set or a data point with my mouse pointer, I want to have here the information in which country I am and the maximum size of our data points for our Colab notebook, I put at 60. This is it. So as you can see here, oops, let's put this away. We have at first an auto size functionality in Colab, beautifully implemented. You do not have to care about the maximum size. If you open somewhere a field, you automatically have a rescale of your figure in Colab. So if you're working on a plane, on a bus, on a tram, on a plane, this is great. You can have the best visualization, also on a small old notebook, you are interactive. So if you go over the data, you see exactly what data it is. Now, as you can see here, we have data of several years. And the years are represented, of course, in data point, but the data is not part of our X or Y axis. And it is not even time as a color coded our time. So this is, this calls for some animation. If, just to show you, if you want to focus on something specific, you want to have here detail, you can zoom in, it is interactive, you can check out exactly what data points we have here, and you can get a better picture. If you want to go back, we have here just the home symbol, you are back home. If you make something stupid like I did here, so you have here your zoom functionality with a click away on your Colab notebook. You just need a browser for data visualization. No other hardware at all. So great. This is it. And now we want to have some animation. And now all I have to do, I say again, I'm here with my scatter command, with my panda data frame. I define my X and my Y axis data set like before. And then all I have to do is say animation frame is now my year. And my animation group is my country. This is it. The rest stays the same. So I want to have a frame by frame animation. So each other frame is year one, year two, year three, and I want to see the country. And then if you want to have a logarithmic scale or here an axis, you can say 
the log of underscore x is true if you want to have a maximum size of your data point and if you want to specify a specific range for the x and y no problem you can do this beautifully and what you will get is as i will show you in a second take some seconds but here is our visualization this is what you get we have here our data point as you can see we're here now in the starting year 1952 and let's you have here a play button so if you have autoplay functionality for your animation it runs through one time it auto stops and then you can click here and you can see here for and backwards and whatsoever you want to do or you say okay start from here with the visualization and you have autoplay now the nice thing again if you change any of the windows there should be the scaling function not now and this is your beautiful visualization that you can check out each year. You can have slow motion, whatever you like. You can see here that our x-axis 100, 1000, 10k and 100k is a logarithmic scale. So you can adapt it to your visualization needs. This is great. Now, another thing I would like to show you if you say, okay, can I have this stacked? Because blue is here Asia. I want to see the total sum of Asia. So I want not to be able to go to China, then go to India, then go to Vietnam and go to Nepal and go to Bangladesh. Can I have it stacked in a bar chart? Well, you're not going to believe it. You just say pa uh, Panda Express. <laughs> it is Plotly Express. I wonder why I always think about Panda Express. Dot bar. So we have here our bars stacked together. We have again the data frame, our data data frame. We have our X and Y axis, the color coding. We say continent because we want to have Asia, Europe, Africa, Americas, and Oceania together. And then again for the animation, you just have to put in two parameters the animation year. The animation frame is year and the animation group is country. You know why. So let's have a look at this. Of course, you start again, 1952. Let's have a look at the autoplay functionality. Now you can see as here the time goes on to 2007. You can see here now the growth functionality depending on all countries in a continent. So you can see here how the different the delta in the growth rate of Asia compared to Europe. And this is so nice. And of course, you can take this and send it off as an interactive HTML file for a male. Somebody can open it in a browser and he or she can just put here, press the play button and they have an interactive visualization of the data in your data frame. How you do this you say figure right continents interactive so you have to write html command and then you just define an interactive uh, html file name here i have my continent i download this this takes about three to five megabytes and three to five seconds it took 3.6 megabytes and here is the html file you can send it per mail and you have interactive can click here manually if you want to go back and forth or whatever you prefer to or you have of course the autoplay functionality this file can anybody with an access to a web browser can have this visualization on their laptop on their computer whatsoever i hope you enjoyed it a little bit this was now here almost our last point with with <laughs> Now, careful, Plotly Express, not Panda Express. And in the next video, if you're interested, you have a GeoVision. I will show you some interactive GeoVision with your data in a Panda data frame or a CSV file. And here for everything for two-dimensional visualization, you have your data in a Panda data frame, you have it in a CSV file, whatever, in the interactive case of 3D or in the animation case, Pandas, data frame, CSV, JSON, whatever data source you have, you can do an immediate two-dimensional, three-dimensional interactive visualization. And if you have a time series, somehow you can do animations. And as I showed you here, it is just two lines of code. 
and you have an animation you can show, people are gonna prefer to a numerical view. And the next video, we have to keep the tension high, I'm gonna show you about a GeoVision we gonna model some data on our globe, on our planet Earth. I say thank you for this time and I see you in the next one.